All right, welcome everybody to the first lab class. Lab class is like lecture class. There's no difference. So let's go. Let's get some computer science knowledge under our belts. Uh, let me become Min Corelli. And uh, you can see he's got some new folders there from CSI 26. They don't matter. What does matter is I want you all to uh, make a new make a new text document um, for today. We can call it like a lab time .cc or something like that. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be collected. This is purely so that you can write code and run it and learn. Okay, so we're going to be learning a lot of really important computer science today. So try to stick with me. Um, I will pause the recording at times so that you can kind of catch up to me. And uh, I I do tend to type fast. So um, like I said, I'll pause the recording at times, and you can um, uh, you can catch up. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go back onto my account. I won't. I won't mess with Min Curly. So, uh, go ahead and start off by typing, uh, what do we call it, lab time, lab time .cc. I want you to start off by typing the magic, okay? So, uh, the magic looks something like this. Um, I call it the magic after the SpongeBob SquarePants. What does this mean? Magic, right? That meme. Um, the official title is like boilerplate or something like that, but I, I think calling it magic is more um, descriptive. So go ahead and type that in, magic square pants. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll put it up here. <laughs> yes, it's okay. There we go, magic, that one. So what does that mean? It's magic, okay. Um, we kind of went over it a little bit of last time. That allows you to read from the keyboard, right to the screen. This one eliminates STDs from your code. And then this is sort of the entry point to your code. So I'm going to pause the, um, I'm going to pause the stream for a second. And I would like everybody to get the magic typed in from scratch. And the reason why I'm having you do this is because you need to do it enough times that it becomes second nature. There's a little bit of memorization in computer science, not a lot. But there's a little bit, and this is one of those things you just need to memorize. Let me resume recording for a second. Yeah, if you if you get a message saying that there is a um, thing open, oh, dang it, I didn't do it. Um, yeah, let's do this. Uh, if you quit Putty, which you shouldn't do, uh, with Vim open, or you know your Wi-Fi goes down or something, it, it saves a copy of it for you. So let me log back in, and if I try editing the file again you'll get this message here. So it says there is a swap file open. So swap file means that when your thing unexpectedly quit, it saved the contents to the swap file. And depending on uh, what you want, a lot of times I just delete it and just redo whatever it was I was missing. But if you want, you can hit recover and um, then you'll see those words there appeared. Save and quit. When you launch it again, it's gonna still be there. So eventually you're gonna have to delete on it. So D for delete. And there you go, it's it's all good, okay? So, um, the magic is the stuff you typed out, it's the beginning of every C++ program, yeah. This is how you're gonna start every homework assignment in this class. It's called like boilerplate code is the technical, technical name for it. Okay, um, yeah, if you, if you background your program with control Z, um, like this, when you try opening it up again, you're gonna get a message and it's gonna look a little different. There's not gonna be a delete option here. The delete option, um, if you don't see it, look right here and you can see that you have a process still running. And so just quit out. If you have that and type FG, FG stands for foreground. And then it'll open the, the program back up. Control Z minimizes, it's like hitting, uh, it's like hitting the minimize button on Windows and um, Foreground is like when you foreground it like this. So FG to bring it back. Um, control S freezes the screen until you hit Control Q. So um, don't use the mouse. Don't hit Control Z. Don't hit Control S. Uh, that's just part of the learning curve of learning Unix. Okay. Um, let's move on. All right. So what we learned last time was how to do uh, Hello World like that. The backslash n here means uh, enter key or new line. 
it's ex pretty much exactly the same as this. There's kind of a technical detail that's different between the two, um, which doesn't matter for your second data programming. So you can think of the backslash n or the double left arrow end line. That's a, again an L there, not a one, um, as doing the same thing. There, there is under the hood. There is actually something a little different going on, but don't worry about it for now. Okay. So uh, this is where we ended class last time. Now we're going to learn a very, very, very important topic, which is variables. Okay. So if you're familiar with the notion of a variable from algebra. Uh, you're probably in pretty good shape. So, variables in C++ have to be made before they are used. So, for example, if I tried outputting the value of a variable, I could do that like this. However, it's going to yell at me, and it's going to yell at me because I've, I haven't made the variable yet. This isn't true for every programming language, but you'll see here, C++ is yelling at me. It's like, you've you have never declared this thing. Okay, I don't know what X is. is it, what is it? I don't know. I've never heard of it. I've never met this man in my life, right? So you have to make a variable before you can use it. So if we want X to be an integer, there's, there's three kinds of variables we're gonna be working with today. Three types of variables we're working with today. The first one is called int, and it means an integer, a whole number, from negative 2 billion and change to positive 2 billion and change. So integers only hold whole numbers. 3, 4, 7, negative 7, negative 3, negative 4, 0. You cannot hold fractions inside of an integer. You can't hold 0.5 or 1 half. You can't hold pi. If you tried putting pi into an integer, you would get three, which is, um, I've never met this man in my life. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's exactly what the, uh, compiler was, uh, uh, saying when we tried out putting X. So how do we make a variable like this integer X and we're going to initialize its value to be zero. You can initialize it to any integer you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose zero because it's boring. Okay. So this makes a variable. It tells C++ what kind of variable it is. It's an integer, and it gives it a value, which is zero. Okay. This is how you make a variable in C++. And then how to output a variable. To the screen. Well, it's pretty similar to what we learned before, what I showed you before, except now it works. Because before I had not declared the variable, now I have declared the variable. And so it works. Anyone want to put down $100 what value this is going to print to the screen? Without even having to compile it and run it, I will give you guys one guess what number this is going to print to the screen. Zero, there you go, negative zero. Yeah. We're working with floating point numbers, there is such a thing as negative zero. Somehow. <laughs> there really is. Floating point numbers are weird. Um, the answer is zero, very good. All right, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it harder for you all, okay? What number is this going to output to the screen? Life. Very good. Yep. Survey says 42. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. You all think you're all fancy. What about now? Have you run your code? Type uh, A dot out or A for short. I know. I mean, people warned you computer science is hard. I don't, 
I don't know if uh, a bunch of first years are ready for this level of complexity here. <clears throat> is it going to print 42 plus 10 or is it going to print 52? Survey says 52. Okay. So what happens here is uh, it does arithmetic, and then whatever value this works out to is put into the variable we call x. All right. <clears throat> Smarty pants. You guys sound very confident in your answers that it's 42, and in fact it is 42. All right, all right, all right. See how this is. See how this is. All right. How about now? I don't know. I got. I got to kick. I got to kick the difficulty up a little bit. Got a bunch of people saying 26. Okay. Answer's 26. Okay. Right. Let's take it down a notch. Let's just make it make it real easy. Let's just make it super easy for y'all here. Alright. What about now? What value is this gonna print to the screen? Hmm. Got a 26 for Motol, but I'm pretty sure that was for the previous answer. Three, four, three, three and a half. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Nine plus ten. Can't be decimals. Yeah, integers do not hold decimals. So everybody's saying three and a half. Mm -mm. Can't hold decimals. Remember what I said? If you tried putting pi into an integer, you get three. Not four. Doesn't round. Everything after that decimal place gets thrown away. Okay. So uh, we are not doing rounding. It, if you ever try stuffing anything with a decimal into an integer, everything after the decimal just vanishes. Okay. So if I tried putting 3.99999 into here, yeah, it's yelling at me, but okay, it's fine. Just guillotine. Okay. Truncates. How do you leave insert mode? Hit escape. So integers only hold whole numbers, man. Like that's all they do. Ooh, let's do this one. All right. Negative three point nine 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 nine. What about this one? Does it go down to the uh, integer below it, or does it go up to the integer above it? Place your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. Roulette wheel is coming to a stop. All right, looks like we got a lot of people confident it is negative three, and the answer is negative three. Okay, very good, well done, well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. Okay, um, so what kind of math is available here? Um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. So modulus is represented with the percentage sign. I don't know why it's a percentage sign, but it be that way. So this is the is the remainder operator. Okay, you remember long division? Three divides into ten. How many times? Three. With a remainder of with a remainder of one. So. Give you a harder one. Yep. What is this going to output? If you divide 100 by 3, what is the remainder on the operation? Not not the division. We have the, the front slash for that. What is the remainder on this? Yep. 
Looks like you're all getting it. Can't can't confuse you. All right, and the answer is one. Okay. So what about negative one? <laughs> uh. Answer is negative one. It shouldn't be. It should actually be two. Uh, so don't don't use modulus with negative numbers. Um, yeah, the answer is actually two, but because it divides in negative one times the remainder of two. But um, that's more of a CSI twenty six topic. Okay. So just don't don't use don't use uh, the uh, modulus operator with negative numbers just in general. All right, um, eh, there's parentheses, you know, so we could do like uh, ten divided by three times four divided by three. Modulus three. So you can use parentheses, orders of operation, all that kind of stuff. What's the answer going to be? parentheses around here just so it's not ambiguous to you no it doesn't really change anything hmm, hmm. hmm. got got some binary code coming out here we got some ones some zeros test your mental math abilities the answer is zero and the reason why it's zero is because 10 divided by 3 is 3 4 divided by 3 is 1. 3 times 1, 3. 3 divides into 3 with one time with a remainder of 0. So the answer is 0. So that's a. Uh, yeah. It's about as complicated as I can make it. Okay. So, uh, yeah. What other kind of variables can we make? Alright, well. How about we do uh, some decimals, floating point numbers. Not decimals. So we'd say float f and set that bad Oscar to be 10.0 divided by 3. going to print out. So this is not 10, it's 10.0, which means it's a floating point number, okay? It means it, it does have decimals, it has digits following the whole number. Anyone want to take a guess as to what number this is going to print out? Two? Five? What do you think it's going to print So we've moved beyond the world of discrete math. Discrete math means you're working with integers. We are now in the world of floating point numbers. So, uh, what do we got? 3.3, close. Not close. 3.33333. Yep. All right. What would happen if I did this? <clears throat> yeah, it's giving me a warning for a reason. <laughs> what do you think this is going to print to the screen? Nice warning, by the way, on the compiler's part. Thank you. Might give you a clue as to what's going on here. Yeah, 10 is an integer. 3 is an integer. If you ever divide two integers together, you get an integer as a result. Okay, so this is actually going to be three. Okay, yeah, that, that warning does look new to me too, and I appreciate it. It's actually quite nice because I make that mistake all the time. 
So if you want a number to be floating point, you can slap a F at the end of the number there. Let's see, 10 point, I think would work. Or just 10 point is good enough. That makes it a double precision number. Which details don't really matter right now. Or just 10.0, which is what I usually do. And it actually doesn't matter which one of these is the floating point number. If either of them is a floating point number, then it does floating point division instead of integer division. And you get you get decimals. Is it always five numbers after the decimal? By default. You can increase the precision of the number of digits you get. And then you get more. But you notice, ugh. yeah, uh, we don't really have that much precision. Okay? So, uh, yeah. we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then after that we got some error. Hmm. Okay? So, what's the thing after the four thirds? What is the thing after the four thirds? Oh, that's the modulus operator. That is the remainder. So yeah, you can you can in fact change the precision of it uh, if you want to see more. But then uh, you might reveal the fact you actually don't have as much precision as maybe you thought uh, you had. So the uh, float is a single precision floating point number with about six digits of precision. If you want to have a double precision floating point number, uh, there's something called double, which is a double precision for extra significant digits. So if I were to turn this into a double, then you'll see I get more significant digits that are correct. Okay. And you'll see for a double, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, six, eight, 17, about 16 or 17 digits of precision. So it just kind of depends, like how how accurate do you need your numbers to be? Uh, a lot of the times we use doubles um, just because they're slower, right? They're they're substantially slower than a float. They might even be twice as slow. Um, but if you need precision, then we use them. So it's just it's just a um, a trade off, right? Um, floats are faster. Uh, doubles give more precision. That's kind of the rule. So you can pick whichever one you want. You guys understand? So what is this going to print to the screen? What's this going to print to the screen? Screen. for an exact answer here. <laughs> uh, you're putty froze. Should you reopen it? Will it save your code? Yeah, it'll do that thing that I showed earlier where you'll get a recovery screen. You hit R to recover your code, save and quit. And then when you relaunch, delete this, the scratch file. And then it'll, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be good. Okay. Anyone? What is this going to print? This Six point six 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 seven. I want exact digits. Anybody who didn't say exactly this is wrong. <laughs> there you go. That's that's the right answer. Okay.
Both intervals have the same amount of significant digits. If I make this a float, you'll see that the float only gives you about six or seven significant digits of precision, and then the double has uh, 16 or 17, somewhere around there. It's not exact because it's significant digits in binary, but yeah. So, so float uh, is that, and then double is that. So you can see you get a um, more precise result with doubles. There are a little slur to use. Okay. So, any questions? Makes sense. Um, what about um, what about modulus? What if I turn that into okay? Well, thanks, Clang, for ruining it. Um, <laughs> any, anyone want to take a guess as to uh, what happens if you try? Getting a remainder when you do floating point division. Um, right? Like how many times does 7.1 divide into 26.6? What's the remainder? Uh, in general, it doesn't make any sense, right? You know what I mean? Like, because when you do floating point division, right, there's, there's not really a remainder. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if we have like, you know, 121.333 divided by, you know, 897 point, you know, whatever, it just divides in, right? Like you don't get a remainder, it do, you know what I mean? Like you just, you get a decimal. So if you try, if you try compiling the code, it'll say, uh, no, you cannot use a int on one side and a double on the other side uh, with a, and that's a pretty cool error message, by the way, like the error messages good job like they've gotten better <laughs> they've actually gotten a lot better since when i was starting to even it's starting to teach here at this college so um how you doing girl all right hey, it's quite impressive so yeah you can't you can't do modulus with uh floats on either side even if they're both floats or whatever like you can't when you can be done with class can't do it uh, 4.30, I think? It'll, it'll be a while. Why, oh, you want to go lift weights? <laughs> Alright. Guess not. Um, yeah. Alright, so... Can do modulus with floats. It's kind of the, uh... Only restriction. Floats. Um make a numeric literal a float floating point number add a to the end of it. And there's different ways of doing it. You can say 3.f instead of 3.0. That's pretty common. And you'll notice that actually makes it a float. You see that? It makes it a float instead of a double. By default, these things are double precision. Um, if you want it to be faster, Instead of 3.0, you say 3.f, and then it makes it a float instead of a double. Um, might go a little faster. I don't know. So, it still doesn't work. You know, it's, you do that if you want. So they're both floats now. So you'll see, you'll see people coding that way. So, 20 float divided by 3 float. Um, okay, any questions about this? So we've learned how to make two different kinds of variables, ints and floats. Um, we learned one variant of float, which is called double, which you use if you want more precision. Um, what if you want more precision on an integer? Okay, that's a good question. Um, uh, okay, well, um, there is something called a long, long. For a uh, for an integer, and so um, an integer goes from negative two billion to positive two billion. A long long means an integer going from some really, really high one, 
It's like a 64-bit, 2 to the 64-bit power. However big that is, this is 2 to the 32nd power. Range. So 2 to the 32nd power is about 4 billion. Um, this is like an unimaginably big number. So, um, yeah, this is sufficient for most normal counting purposes. You could feasibly have more than $2 billion in a bank account if you're like Bill Gates or something. Uh, but for a long, long, um, for any, you know, human sort of purposes, um, two to the 64th power is, is actually a really large number. Uh, two. Left shifted. Really? Okay. Uh, scientific then. 2 to the 64th power is like a large number. <laughs> Thousands, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, pentillions. I don't even know what that is. It's a big number. Okay. Like, that's pretty good. Like, I, I've definitely exceeded it before. But, like, it's a pretty big number. Okay. Um. So, yeah, um, you might ask, is there such a thing called a long? And the answer is yeah. How big is a long? Same as an integer. <laughs> so, that's why it's a long. long. <laughs> and you might be like, well, is there a long, long, long? And the answer is no. There is no long, 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 unfortunately. Just keep keep adding keep adding longs to the end of it uh, unfortunately not unfortunately not um, is there a long float nope is there a long double yes there is so uh, yeah I, I don't know like to me it's just kind of hilarious they're like there's a long how big is a long is it long is a long longer than an integer no. Why well, is it called a long then? It might be. Okay. But it's not. Yeah. It's the same size. But it could be. Because an integer, in theory, could be 16 bits, even though on no modern system are they 16 bits. So a long is a minimum of 32 bits. So there's a long, long, if you actually need the long longer than the long. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just funny to me. I don't know. Okay, yeah, long cubed. Um, and if you need things even bigger than that, then um, in CSI twenty six you'll learn about that kind of stuff. There's uh, something called the GNU Multi Precision Library. Not good name. GNU Multi Precision Library. And so if you need really big numbers, there's this thing here. Um, yeah, boost multi precision is probably a better version of it. Yeah, you can you can make integers as big as you want, you know, technically if you if you use that. Okay. So, uh, do, 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 do. and the third kind of variable we're going to work with today, I promised you three variable types. Are there more than three? Yeah, but we're going to learn three today. These are the important ones. The third one is called string. Anyone want to take a bet on what this line here is going to print to the screen? So a string is, get your bets in, and I'm going to uh, describe what a string is here. Okay. A string is uh, zero or more letters. Characters. So words are held in strings. I don't know why they're called a string. They're a string of characters, I guess. I don't know. Hello world, hello world, hello world. Okay, all right, all right. You're all, you're all fancy. All right, yep, there it is, hello world. Okay, okay, it's fair. Uh, what about if hello, and I'm gonna have string two set to world. String one. And I'm going to output string one plus 
string two. So string one contains the word hello, and string two contains the word world. Uh, you might notice you can actually make multiple variables at the same time by putting commas between them. So you could do something like integer x, y, z, like that. I've already got an x. Uh, x two. <laughs> see that. So this makes uh, these three variables at once and does not initialize, initialize then, which is bad. Okay. So never, uh, never do this. Never make a variable that's uninitialized. It's a uh, uh, really bad practice. But I'm just showing you that you can do this to make three variables all at once if you want. So in, in C++, you must make a variable before you can use it. Okay. So uh, this is going to be a variable named string1, s1, who is initialized to hello. And it's also going to make a variable called s2, string2, that is initialized to world. And I'm going to be adding the two strings together. Uh, what's after the double question mark? What is the double question mark? F. Um, so I got most of you, it looks like, um, it is not going to print hello world as two words. It is going to print it as one word because I did not have any spaces in there. So, uh, aha. So if I wanted to make it the way it was before, I'd have to put a space in there. Okay. So, um, put a space in there and then all is right with the world. And we have a space in there. So it, it doesn't put a space in there. You don't put a space, it won't put a space. You know, it doesn't know that you wanted a space. It does exactly what you tell it. And that's the cool thing about computer science. That's the cool thing about programming is that it will do exactly what you tell it to do. Uh, and it's the downside to computer science. It will do exactly what you tell it to do. Well, it should have known I wanted a space. Well, it can't know that. You, you have to tell it. You know, it doesn't know how to do anything you don't tell it to do. Okay. So... Um, what is the button to unfreeze the screen again? Control Q, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, Control S stops the uh, current terminal. So Control S. Now I can't move the cursors around at all. And then it's Control Q resumes. It's actually really useful. I, I don't. Uh, I think it predates probably Control S being used to save things. Uh, like if you have a lot of stuff happening on the screen, you can just hit Control S and it freezes the screen, and you look at it, and then Control Q to resume. Um, I actually use that somewhat often. Um, okay, well, all right, you guys got the plus operator done. What about the minus operator? Thanks, Kling. Thanks. Uh, Anyone want to take a bet as to what will happen if you subtract two strings from each other? Hello, minus world. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like trying to trying to set up this great like, oh, I don't know, can you? Sub as it's like, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> so if we try this and try compiling it. Uh, we get an error message, and yay, look at these error messages. Hooray. So uh, this is a great introduction to uh, the worst part of C++, by the way. Uh, it's really the only part of C++ that I find um, bad. Like, there's a lot of things that people complain about with C++. This is the only one where people actually have, like, a legitimate gripe, which is the compiler error messages are sort of universally bad. Uh, in in C++. They're getting better. Like, this whole thing here, uh, if you scroll up, um, like, that's actually, like, they're color coding it. and Like, I'm actually honestly impressed by how much better it is. This, however, not helpful. This, nothing in here is helpful. Especially for a first semester student in their first week of school. Uh, none of this is helpful. It, says, it doesn't help me. Like, let, let's just read one of these error messages. Note, std string, aka std colon colon underscore underscore cxx11 colon colon basic underscore string, angle bracket char, close angle bracket, 
is not derived from const underscore underscore GNU underscore CXX normal iterator. It's not. Yeah, of course it's not. They're completely different things. It, like it, like the fact that it's that it considers it relevant to tell me this is like, like, like there's a reason why I have a bald patch here on my head. It's because I rip out my hair. Because it's like, why are you telling me this? I I know it's not. They're not at all the same, at all. You don't you don't need to tell me that it's not derived from the other because it's not. You know, and it's just like, hey, just thought you should know. I'm going to give you multiple pages of error messages of things that, uh, you know, uh, that maybe you, you, you would care about. No, and no, nobody ever cares about it. So anytime you see something like this where it says note, um, yeah, uh, ignore it. And the worst part is, is that there's not like a compile flag. There's a compile flag for like everything in G++, the compiler. And there's no compile flag to just be like, yo, shut up. <laughs> I don't care, you know. Uh, note candidate template class underscore iterator L comma class underscore iterator R const expert decal type parentheses parentheses underscore underscore y dot base minus underscore underscore x dot base open close parentheses close parentheses close parentheses std colon colon operator minus open parentheses const std colon colon reverse iterator iterator by reference const std reverse iterator doesn't work it didn't work we tried this thing that makes no sense whatsoever and it didn't work just thought you should know because we went to all this work to make this thing see if it could work and it didn't work so we're going to tell you about all the work that we did that didn't work so that you can appreciate us and you know what i don't appreciate it i don't it actually makes me not appreciate them very much so um yeah it's baffling to me it's baffling to me why the compiler thinks that giving you multiple pages of completely irrelevant error messages that aren't error messages they're notes these are just notes. They're just things we tried. And, you know, maybe we could make this one thing be another thing that's completely unrelated. And, and you know what? You know what? It didn't work. It didn't work. We just thought you should know. We just thought we'll, we'd make a note of it. So here's what you do. If you ever see any of these walls of error messages kinds of things, scroll up to the top and look at the first error message. Because the first error message is actually the problem. And the first error message is actually helpful. And it will tell you what happened here, okay? So it said, we cannot find a match for operator minus. So in other words, you're trying to do an operator minus and uh, you pass two strings to it and we couldn't find anything. There's nothing, there's no, yeah, you can't subtract two strings is what it's telling you. Like th that just doesn't exist. There's no minus operation defined for strings. There is for plus, there's not for minus. And so, yeah, just scroll up to the top and that's all you need to see. And then ignore all of this stuff because you're going to go cross-eyed and none of it helps. And it won't, even, it won't even increase your understanding of the language, really. It really doesn't. It's just doing dumb things trying to get your code to work. And it just feels like the need to tell you that it, it did them. Okay. Uh, first Kearney rant, naturally, it's on template substitution errors. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, it's because it's a, because it, it, like, because I care about first year students, right? And and that is like offensively like hostile to new programmers. You know what I mean, Ben Crelly? Like like I want new programmers to enjoy programming and be like, oh, this isn't too bad. And then, you know, you type in you you know, you change one plus to a minus and it's like it just vomits pages of error messages on the screen that aren't even error messages. They're just implementation details from the guts of the compiler that nobody cares about. So okay. So what if we tried to do multiply? I'm gonna hide the error message. Anyone want to take any bets that this will work? I mean, it's kind of giving the answer away. Anyone think that you can multiply two things? No. Yeah, you guys are too smart for me. All right. Yeah, this time it didn't give us two hundred. Pages of error messages, though. That's nice. Doesn't work. What about division? Think division will work? Anyone? Nope. And also didn't get two pages or ten pages of error messages. Yeah, nice. All right. 
So yeah, so about all you can do with uh, strings, you can add them together. Um, you could do this if you wanted. So uh, the way that Cout works, let me talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> the way that Cout works is um, you can think of the word Cout here as meaning like the computer screen, like the console out. That's what that stands for. It's this screen here. And you can think of the arrows there as like data flowing into the screen. And so when you do something like this, what it's going to do, it's going to print the value of S1 first. Then it's going to print the value of S2. Then it's going to print end line, which is like the enter key. Okay. So anyone want to guess what this will print to the screen using your powers of computer science? We have nobody on the YouTube stream right now. We got 49 people on Discord. So we're right up against that limit. Hello world, hello world, hello world. Once again, I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh wait, never mind. Damn it, I got myself. I left the space in there. <laughs> Good job, you're on, you're on fire. Yeah, what I meant to do was this, where it'd be like, you know, there's no space, but I'd left a space in there before. So, well done, well done. You you have uh, uh, defeated the master or whatever. Tristan, good to see you, sir. Um, yeah, so no Facebook live stream. I am uh, live streaming on uh, YouTube right now. There's, I think, one person uh, watching it. Okay. Um... So, good. All right. One more thing we're going to learn for today, and then I'm going to have you start doing some lab time. Then I'm going to give you your first programming assignment. Okay. So, uh, the one last thing we're going to learn for today, we've learned three things today. Maybe four if you count algebra, All right? So, I'm going to make a note up here. Learning points for today. Making integers, making floats, making strings, and algebra. Plus, minus, parentheses, that kind of stuff. And there's one last thing we're going to learn for today, and that is how to read from the keyboard. So rather than, because right now our program is kind of boring, right? Like we just run it and it's like, there's the answer. And uh, give him bridges, nice. Uh, shapes. <laughs> so uh, that's, a, that's a second semester assignment where uh, they had to um, give it a bunch of points, identify what kind of shape it is. Is it a rectangle, is it a square, is it a triangle, that kind of stuff. And uh, they're a little salty because it, Turned out to be a little harder than they thought. Okay, uh, not too bad, I don't think. But like, I, I guess it, you know, it took me it took me a couple hours to do it. So it wasn't it wasn't a trivial assignment. All right, so how to read from the keyboard? So right now, yeah, every time I run this program, I get the same answers. Right, it's quite boring. Like it, it can be useful, and in fact, there's been a number of times in my life where I've just written a program that does some computation. Right? Like, you know, add these numbers together and, you know, divide by this and add by this and, you know, do some compound interest and, you know, and that's fine. It's just kind of boring, you know, but it's useful. Right? But a lot of the times, you know, it's just the same every time. Right? But a lot of the times, what we want to do is get imp input. Right? How to read input from the keyboard. So we want the user to be able to type in a value. Okay. So. We do something like this. See out. Please enter your name. String. Remember, we have to make a variable before you use it. Name. Cn. Your name. 
This is how you read from the keyboard. All right. So by using CN, uh, the, the program will pause. So C out, console output, is the screen. C in, the console input, is the keyboard. And when you get to this line right here, it will pause your program and wait for you to type something, okay? So uh, it'll, if you run this program right now, it'll say, please enter your name, and it'll wait. And then after they type in the name, maybe we'd be like, name is cool. How about that? You guys see what's going on here? So you type in uh, Voss and then it's gonna see how Voss is cool. You type in Myers, prints out Myers is cool. You type in Bencourt, prints out Bencourt is weird, right? So, I mean, sorry, Bencourt is cool. Does this make sense? And I'm gonna give you guys some lab time to do this, but just conceptually, does this make sense to you? If I run this, please enter your name, and I will type in uh, Cabrera, and it says Cabrera is cool. And then it continues with the rest of the program. So this code here pauses, okay? That line right there, it pauses. It stops the program, and it waits until you hit your name and hit enter, okay? It doesn't continue like if I I'm typing stuff doesn't continue. It only continues when I hit enter. And you'll notice that it only reads one word. So it only read the first word there. I typed in all these words. It only read the first one. Okay. So when you read in a string, it reads in a word. Okay. We'll learn later on how to read one character and we'll learn later on how to read a whole sentence like this. By default though, it reads one word. Okay. So what I'd like for you to do now for lab time, see if you can figure it out by using this as an example. I'm going to give you half an hour of lab time. Lab time. I want you to read in multiple variables. It's Floats, strings, do things with them, like averaging two numbers together, right? So like maybe they type in three and four into a float, and then you average them and print out, print out the results. Um, Uh, this is the same thing as this. Less typing. Uh, there's a there's a slight technical uh, difference between using the backslash n and the end line that has to do with performance and flushing the buffers and things like that. But for where you're at right now, these two lines of code are exactly the same. Okay. It prints out a boss is cool or a boss is cool with an enter key at the end. Either way. Alright, so um bum 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 bum. Uh Mincrelli, any ideas besides averaging two numbers together uh they might want to do? Um average two ints. Two floats, two first name and last name and output. Last name first and first name last. Put a comma, comma between them. Control Q. Uh, send out the algebra summit. Yeah, I probably am for the actual homework. But uh, this is just lab time. So. Um, bum, 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 bum. What else? What else could they do? Let they know they got they got algebra. Maybe um, um, with two integer.
Rangers do both division and remainder. So 30 and 7. So print. that makes sense like because 30 divided by 7 right is 4 with a remainder of 2 so maybe actually you don't do that I think they could do that what they know right now yeah seems fair yeah that, that's modulus right um, yeah let's do that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the stream now you guys will have half an hour which means at 407 we will come back and I will show you the answers to the code this is lab time code. It is not something I'm going to be collecting. However, you should do it right now because your homework assignment is going to be very similar to this. And you want to get it under your belt and get experience and get help while you've got uh, a number of experienced programmers here. Uh, Mincarelli, Cabrera, uh, I th think uh, Tristan left. Um, available here to help. Okay. And then once you get it done, screenshot your code and post on the Discord channel, and then maybe other people can uh, copy off you. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of them are, yeah, yeah, it's like averaging two ints. Right, you know, it's like, it's, 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 I don't know. I'll make it a little harder. Let's do like three, three flips. Yeah, it's like, it's like uh, the average of uh, 10 and 20 is 15, All right? Four, 4.1, 4.2 is... All right, something like that. Make it a little harder. Add them up and divide them. Divide the count. Yeah, so if you're averaging two numbers, you add them together, divide by two. If you're averaging three numbers together, you add them up, divide by three. Okay, pause in the stream now. We will come back at 4.08 at this point. All right, everyone, we are back. And so I'll go ahead and post whatever it is you were able to accomplish today onto the chat channel. And we'll take a look at it. So uh, some people had trouble, like, even, like, writing, like, the magic and getting even anything at all done from scratch. Uh, so... Let's just start off, um, like the first thing I asked you to do is just to read two integers from the keyboard, average them, print them back out. Let's just take it from the top in a file called uh, average.cc. So you start off by typing the magic, like that. It's just as fast as I did it, I'm sure. Now if we're gonna average two integers together, we need to first declare two integers. So I'm going to declare two integers named x and y, and you can do it like that. Um, one thing that I want you all to get into the habit of doing, though, is to always initialize your variables. Um, C++ allows you to have a variable that isn't initialized. It does not get initialized to zero by default. It'll be some value. It might be zero. It might be five. Um, if you were to I don't know, like, see out these values here. Um, it's undefined behavior, what numbers you get. We're getting zeros here. There's no guarantee of that. Um, they could be any value. So uh, it's very dangerous. New programmers fall prey to that all the time. So always initialize your variables. It is a good habit to be in, and there's no reason not to other than um, you don't want to type a couple letters or something. But um, yeah, some people like, well, you know, what if we're immediately, you know, reading into it, right? Like that. Um, still initialize your variables. Trust me on this. I've been doing this for a long time, and I've been to Mount Moria, I've seen the fires of Mount Doom, I've traveled with the Fellowship through tundra and swamp and frost. Um, I've seen it all, and a lot of bugs are caused by people being too lazy to initialize their variables. So even if even if you think there's no possible way they could be used uninitialized, initialize them anyway. 
It's not going to slow you down anymore. Please enter it to ints. Read into integers, and right now we're just going to print them back out. Okay. G plus plus, average .cc. So we punch in 5 and 19. We get 5 and 19 back. So um, you should be able, by the end of today, to be able to write this. Okay. Uh, now we want to do the average, right? And so the average would be something along these lines. Okay. You want to make it a little fancy? You can be like, Average is that. And so here is a program that will read two uh, numbers from the keyboard and then output their average. Okay. So it's going to look something like this. Please enter 10 and 20. The average is 15. So let me take it line by line. Okay. This is your first day kind of really writing a program. So all this stuff up here is the magic. Don't forget the close curly brace at the bottom. Uh, I know some of you forgot this down here. You need to have matching curly braces for everything or all hell will break loose. Uh, this line of code here, make two variables that are integers and initialize the zero, okay? In C++, you must make a variable before you can use it. Yeah, this is for people that have never never coded before, okay? So if you're going to be averaging two variables together, you have to first make them. And so why did I call them X and Y? Because I don't have any better names <laughs> for you than that. Uh, in general, like if you know what you're doing, like if you're... Uh, asking how many DVDs you're gonna buy and the price per DVD, then you give the variables better names. Like you would name the variable like DVD price or something like that. Um, okay, so second line here is going to print to the screen. Print instructions to the screen. The third line here reads two integers from the keyboard. So this is going to read, uh, the first number the user types in is going to go into X. The second number the user types in is going to go into Y. And they can be on the same line or on two different lines, it doesn't matter. Uh, then, once the user has hit enter, then it moves on, and it will print out the average is, and then we do a little bit of algebra here. So we're adding the two variables together. So if the user typed in 10 for X and 20 for Y, it adds 10 and 20 together to get 30, divides by 2 to get 15, and it prints 15 to the screen. So that is how you do that. Okay. If I type in 100 and 200, the average is 150. If I type in 10 and 11, the average is 10. Why 10? Because it rounds down. Uh, it truncates. It, it, there's no decimals, right? Whenever you work with um, ints, there's never any decibels, there's nothing, no fractions, no point ones, anything like that. It all just gets cut off. Okay, so the average of 10 and 11 is 10. Which might hurt some of you that have taken uh, stats before, but it should be 10 and a half. Yeah, well, yeah, we're in integer world, okay? If you wanna do this in floating point world, we can do that too. So let's uh, do the second part of the lab today which was to do three, the average of three floats. Mix this up a little bit. And the average is going to be x plus y plus z divided by 3. Okay. So here is the second lab. Why do you set x equal to 0 and y equal to 0? Because if you don't set them to 0, they're going to have a random value that might not even be random. It might just be 0. But it's it could be 5. It could be 10. 
it could be 100, it could be 200, it could be 300. Um, if you ever, don't ever uninitialize a variable, that's just one of those rules of thumb for me as a professional programmer that's worked professionally in the field for 20 something years now. Uh, don't ever do this, All right? You could, your code would probably even work the same because you're writing into it. Um, just trust me on this. Like you always want to have your variables initialized. Because if you ever use them, when they're uninitialized, they might they might be zero and, and your code works 99% of the time, but then 1% of the time your code crashes. And you don't know why. And you run it and it works. You're just like, why did it crash? I don't know. It's highly, highly dangerous to have any uninitialized variables out there. You always want your variables to be initialized. In, in Java, it doesn't even allow it. You can have an uninitialized variable, but if you ever try printing the value of it or whatever, it just doesn't compile. Like the compiler doesn't allow it. In C++, it'll be like, well, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Have fun. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Um, all right, so this is the average of three floats. Any questions about this? You guys understand what's going on here? Could you do it yourself? If you're feeling lost, now is the time to tell me. Because, uh, you know, I'm not here for people to be like, yeah, of course, I know what's going on. I've been programming since middle school. No. Like, if you don't know what's going on, like, now is the time to ask. Or, or you know, if you're embarrassed to, like, reveal to the class that you don't know what's going on, or embarrassed to reveal to the professor, moi, that you don't know what's going on, uh, message Ben Corelli. He's a nice dude. And um, he's super... Um, compassionate and empathetic and, and stuff like that. So if you have no idea what's going on, just message him and be like, yo, I don't know what's going on. Because today is the day we started actually programming. Okay. Like it doesn't, like if you don't know what a variable is in algebra and you keep going in algebra, it doesn't get better. It gets worse. Right. So if you don't get this, you need to understand it now. Like contact Mincarelli come into the tutorial center and make sure you understand how to make a variable, how to print it to the screen, how to read from the keyboard into the variable, and how to do algebra. That's Those are our learning points for today. Uh, that's what we learned today. How to make a variable, how to print it to the screen, how to do algebra, how to read it in from the keyboard. That's what we, and you're responsible for knowing that now. And it's in the Zybooks. The Zybooks are due next Friday. Uh, make sure you do the Zybooks. If you don't do the Zybooks, you're going to have a, a rough time because it reinforces all of our learning in this class. Um, uh, for strings, yeah, you don't need to initialize a string. A string will actually initialize itself. It's a bit of a bit of a detail. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't initialize a string to zero. Uh, okay, so. Uh, read the first name and last name. Okay. Them first last dot cc. Those who are first shall be last. Those who are last shall be first. So, string first name equals read. Please enter your first name. This is a different way of doing input than before that I'm going to show you because uh, it's a little less typing. This is basically doing the same thing as this making a variable and uh, see in, see out stuff, but it's a little bit more compact. So your first name, this is your last name, and then it's going to output your last name followed by a comma, comma and a space followed by your first name. Okay. This is non-standard C++, but it's less typing, so it's worth showing you. So you type in your first name, you type in your last name, then it prints out your last name, comma, your first name. Um, this code here is equivalent to um, Variables, see out. Yeah. 
So these two lines of code here are the same thing as these five lines of code here. These five lines are the same as the two lines above. This is non-standard. Um, This is just something on our server. Uh, it makes input and output a lot easier. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so output, uh, please enter your first name. It then reads, read a word into first name. This line here makes two variables. This prints the screen. This reads from the keyboard. From the keyboard. Into first name, read a word from the keyboard into last name. And then it prints out the last name, comma, the first name. Okay. And if you have any questions about this, you have no idea what's going on, you're embarrassed to say anything, message Ben Curly. He'll explain to you. He's nice. Okay. You can always ask me to. But I've got, you know, comments here that explain what's going on. In C++, you must make a variable before you can use a variable. And so this line that I've highlighted there makes two variables, one named last name, one named first name. It then prints to the screen, please enter your first name. It then reads from the keyboard into the first name. It then prints, please enter your last name to the screen. It then reads from the keyboard into last name. And then it prints out last name, comma, first name. So, Justice Mincarelli. And there you go. When do we add more things to the top where the include is? Uh, yeah, just ignore that for now. Um, whenever you need more functionality. The core, the core C++ language only has a very small amount of stuff in it. And so if you want to do uh, stuff like uh, sorting, like if you want to order things from biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest, then you would like include algorithm and, and things like that. Um, for now, all you need is IO stream, really. Or if you want to use the read function, um, that's... If you want to use this function here, because it's more compact and faster to type and less error prone. Uh, it's just better than C out, honestly, but it's not standard. Um, that's how you include it. Otherwise, up here, you're going to have include IO stream. Okay, and then what was the last thing we had for lab time today? Uh, lab time is uh, with two integers, do both division and remainder. Okay. both division and remainder. Okay. And uh, quotient. Read. read a number. Read the dividend. Please type in the quotient. Please type in the dividend. And then see out. It's like 20 divided by 3, right? So 20 is the quotient and 3 is the dividend. Or am I doing that backwards? I don't remember. So dividend, dividend divides into quotient, uh, how is it? Uh, quotient. By the way, dividend. Times with a remainder of quotient modulus. So if we have thirty and seven, thirty divide, uh, 7 divides into 30 four times, right? 28 with a remainder of 2. Yeah, 
133. 33 divides into 103 times, the remainder of 1. What if they type 0 for the dividend? Ooh, that's a good question. All right, uh, quotient of 100, dividend of 0, crash. lab time for today. Your first big programming assignment is due in a week. Uh, so if you go into your, your uh, directory, you will see that uh, there is now a new directory called Algebra. And Algebra has your homework assignment in it. If you go into there, um, you will see that there is a uh, main.cc and it tells you exactly what you need to do. So fill in the missing magic, print this to the screen, followed by inline, create a double named X, initialize it to zero. Every single line of code has a comment for it that tells you exactly what you need to write, okay? So uh, try and get that done over the weekend. Uh, it'll be due technically, I think, next Friday, but um, you should try and do it like over the weekend. It should take if you know what you're doing, it'll take like a couple minutes. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, you should do it immediately also so that you know that you don't know what you're doing and you can ask for help, okay? So this will be your first test of your programming skills. Small though, may, small though they may be, from this seed will germinate your tree of knowledge of programming. Um, you screenshot the work and upload on Canvas. No, programming assignments like this are graded automatically. So what happens is um, I run a program on the due date, which is noon next Friday. I run the program and it collects everyone's homework, compiles it, tests it, and if you did good, you get 100%. And if you did bad, you get a zero. And if you ever want to know what your grade is in the meantime, um, you can always run input tester. Let's see here. Uh, so you compile your code and you want to know if it works right. There is a program called input tester. And input tester will tell you how many points you're going to get on the homework. So you run that. If you get all tests passed, you're done. Go home, play video games, you know, take a nap whatever. And it's like that for almost all the homework we do in this class. Almost all the homework we do in this class has an input tester for it. And so basically uh, you get it all right. Boom, 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 boom. You're good. If you screw something up, like um, you do an addition instead of a subtraction, one of the test cases will fail. Um, I don't want to show you the answer here. So let me break my code slightly. Uh, so I'm going to change uh, an add to like a minus somewhere inside of there. And when I run the input tester now, you'll see, oh, well, your code is outputting negative 0.5. The correct answer is positive 2.5. And then you can either quit or continue on. Your code printed out zero. The right answer is 10. Your code is printed out this. The right answer is this. And, uh, oh, look, I passed the last test case. Okay, so let me fix that before I <laughs> leave, that, leave that in. All right, all right. You have unlimited tries. Yes, you can, you should get into the habit of just running the input tester once, you know, once you're kind of in a place where, um, like, your code is somewhat functional, just start running the input tester, like, every time you update your code and it'll you can have an eye on like how close to being done you are you know I'm 60% of the way there I'm 70% of the way there so what's a double named X a double named X is this it means you're making a variable named X of type double and you should probably initialize it to probably initialize it to zero okay so for this assignment, you are going to be making variables. You're going to be outputting stuff to the screen. You're going to be reading things in from the keyboard. Okay. 
and that will be due in a week, but I recommend, like I said, get it done over the weekend, and then you'll be able to find out where you're at. You know, like if you get it done instantly, all right, you're pretty good. If you like super struggle with it, talk to me and Corelli. Talk to me. Talk, get, ask help on the, on the chat channel. This is not something you want to sit on until Thursday night and then, you know, realize you don't know what's going on. All right. You got you to take a little bit of responsibility for your own learning and uh, just try and get it done over the weekend. And uh, maybe I'll even run the input test on Monday and just find out who, who got it done over the weekend. All right. So, uh, double is a double precision float. Yeah. So, that is it for today. Uh, yeah, if you want to uh, open the assignment, um, oh, that guy has never logged in. All right. Um, CD into algebra, type ls, vim main.cc. This is everything you got to do. Do the magic. Do main, print this to the screen, make a double named x, initialize it to zero, read from CN and x. Like each one of these things translates into exactly one line of code. And you got the skills today needed to make it happen. I believe in you, I trust you, don't wait till the last minute. Get it done as soon as possible. All right, that's it for today. Peace out, good luck.